Mixed Media Collage. Here's a list of resources you might need. Okay, my surface collages are both dry um, and now to decide what I'm going to paint over the top of them. And so I'm going to start with my more textural collage um, and I'm going to be looking at my Kirch Vitters research for ideas. Um, I have noticed that Kirch Vitters tends to keep quite a limited palette. So I'm going to use the idea um, of a limited palette in my own work. For this piece, I think I'm going to keep it more abstract in response to Schwitters. Um, and then later on, I might make a more uh, figurative piece based on my previous work. So to start with, I am going to uh, select the most appropriate brush i've got quite a big selection of different brushes and um, which i always keep to hand um but i do tend to pick out maybe two or three that i know i'm probably going to use and just have those nearby um, and i have my palette here ready i'm using yellow ochre black and white keeping a nice limited palette um, obviously you do not need to use those colours, you can choose any colours you like, you don't even have to use a limited palette if you don't want to. Um, uh, it, also, it all depends on the artist that you've looked at um, and any ideas that you have as well. So make sure that you're looking at your previous work to get ideas um, on colour, texture or anything and composition as well. Um, okay, so I'm just going to keep this very abstract and I'm just going to play about with the shapes uh, that I have there and the textures there. I don't want to lose too much of that, but I want to just get on a bit of colour. So I'm just going to get started with some neat uh, ochre. And what is important to mention is that there is no wrong or right. This is all experimentation. Um, don't throw anything away that you're not happy with. Keep everything you do because everything's evidence. And I'm just going to sort of follow some of these shapes. I'm going to be careful with the way I apply the paint, but I'm not going to be too worried about perfection. I'm just going to um, enjoy it. I'm going to mix up some different tones and shades. And I'm going to use water as well, just to um, add some washes. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. That is very abstract. Um, constantly looking at my artist to get ideas. Um, I really like using a limited palette because um, you, oh well, you're so limited, aren't you? You can only use that one colour with the black and the white, um, which really makes you think about how all of the different shades are balanced in the piece. So um, if you haven't given that a really good go, I would um, advise it. Um, I'll just notice some more that I'm want to work into um yeah okay i'm happy with that i'm going to leave that i'm going to put that to one side and then i'm going to get started on my second piece which is going to be uh, going to be quite different and allow that to dry okay so for my my second piece, um, when I applied the textures to the page, um, I was a little bit more um, reserved with the composition. Um, so I just made sure I used a, a, a very small selection of different flat materials. Um, and I also made, I, I already had an idea that I would be using this composition for my work. So I was a little bit more considerate with how I applied those um, materials. 
as you can see. Um, I'm going to continue using a limited palette um, and I'm going to have a go at recreating this piece of work um, but slightly quicker and slightly looser and slightly freer. So I don't want to copy this completely. Um, I want it to still um, show the different textures through. Um, okay so to get started uh, i know some people are are not confident with painting straight away um so you can draw with pencil if you really feel like you, you that's the way that you want to work um but i would always advise using some um a small amount of pigment with water um and then just using your paintbrush to draw on your design first so that's what i'm going to show you now so whenever i start a painting this is how i start small amount of pigment and then I start mapping out my composition and it's the same as drawing but you're just using a paintbrush so I mean if you haven't if you haven't been confident enough to just start painting straight away up to now give this a go because um, you might surprise yourself Um, again I'm using the rule of thirds I'm just going to bring that up a little bit higher um, with a pencil you tend to if you make a mistake you tend to sort of rub it out but um, working on a textured surface that's not going to be that easy and it also means that when you start painting you may well see the pencil underneath it so give this a go you can see that I'm making lots of mistakes, but um, I'm just working back over the top of it. I'm not worrying too much um, about making mistakes. And that's a really good way to be. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm just gonna give that a go now. So like I said earlier, I don't want to completely cover the surface background. So I made this collage um, with lots of different um, interesting um, elements to it so I've got the newspaper the text there and I've got like this old sort of checkbook and um, I don't want to completely cover that I want to be able to still see that coming through so I'm just going to um, start applying my paint but using um, quite a lot of wash over the top and it, in fact I might just sort of build up layers um, until I'm happy with it but this time just a little bit looser compared to the way I worked previously. Okay, let's stop and analyse what we've done so far. So I'm quite happy with that. I can still see the different textures underneath the painting. Um, but uh, if we think about the way the paint has covered over these different textures, um, this is a really good exercise to actually look back, work out what it is that's working, what isn't working, because um, then you can take this into your next piece. Okay, so I really like that the text is still visible from the newspaper elements. So that's definitely something that I would want to use again. Um, being a little bit more cautious with how I apply the paint so you can still, um, so it's still opaque and you can still see through it. Um, I love the texture that the tissue paper has created. So when you brush the paint over the top, you can still see all of the crinkles um, in the paper. And I think that's really effective. What I had really high hopes for was the the canvas element, um, and I I was I, I was thinking that that was going to create like this really nice sort of texture, and it does. It's got a really nice texture, but it's um it's quite hard to cover with paint in comparison to the rest of the piece, um. So you're having to work into that quite a lot more, um, and I also feel like it sort of stands out a little bit um against the background a little too much maybe, um, perhaps I'd use that more in the form foreground um but i do like the texture um yeah no i'm happy with that piece and actually i'm, I'm probably just going to add slight 
slightly more detail on the bottle here um, and then probably just leave it where it is so it's just an experimental piece um it's given me an idea of how um how the colors or, or how the paint works over the top of different materials um and i really like how abstract that is in comparison to my my earlier work actually so i'm going to keep that as it is the whole point of working with texture is to create some interesting elements um, and make your work uh, look tactile and and like so that the idea is that the viewer um wants to pick it up and wants to engage with it and i think that we've achieved that here so i'm going to leave that as it is um but yeah and i've got some really good points from from that piece of work so have a go yourselves Thank you.